Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, before we get too far into the video, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button, that really helps to get my channel promoted, and I appreciate that. Uh, I also love it when people leave comments, so tell me what you think, ideas for videos, how you do things, those are all wonderful things to hear, so I'd love to hear what you think. Um, I'm going to revisit uh, a series that I've done in the past today uh, with a new episode and that is to have three different simple chains that you can make at home and uh, the idea behind these ones are they're not super complicated to make and every once in a while you need to make yourself a chain so these would also make nice bracelets uh, or just a connection chain for something or you could make a whole necklace out of these I think so um, we'll give these a shot and see how you like them uh, before we get started, though, I wanted to thank some groups of people. My patrons over on Patreon are a fantastic uh, group of people. And I really appreciate not only the financial help that they've been providing me, but also the great community that they've developed over there, full of people sharing their ideas and their things that they've made and commenting on each other's stuff. It's really a nice community. So thank you all for that. I really appreciate it. The other group of people are my um, YouTube subscribers. We are at about uh, 12,950, I think was about where it was last time I looked. So thanks for that. We're getting close to 13. Let's, let's break 13 this week if we can. Sometimes you leave the nicest comments and I really am moved by some of those. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. I also appreciate the financial contributions like the super thanks and the buy me a coffees. Those really help a lot with finances. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, with those things being said, let's get started on these chains. This is one of my design idea books. In fact, this is one of the newer ones, and I just broke it out today because I filled up my last one. So, these newer ones have conversion tables on the back. This one has fractions of an inch to decimals to millimeters. Um, I have another one that does uh, American wire gauge to millimeters because I know a lot of people overseas don't use that. and. Um, I may say that out loud and not uh, and forget to write down the millimeter <laughs> conversion. I do that occasionally, but I try to. Um, there's also one that lists the uh, different melting temperatures of silver solder. So it's got a little bit of useful information. They're available in my merch store. I have found in recent years that when I draw something up, I come up with a, a better outcome usually. And so hence the books. Today we're going to do those three different chains. These are generally simple chains. I think these three types are pretty nice ones. We'll see how they turn out. This one's going to be all 18 gauge wire. I'm going to flatten these rings out a little bit and just connect it with some jump rings. This one we're going to have to do a little soldering of small jump rings uh, made out of 18 gauge to some 16 gauge round rings that are kind of oval shaped. More of a ellipsoid oval and these ones are kind of like elongated ovals with almost come to a point and then uh, finally this one's going to be kind of lozenge lozenge that's hard word to say lozenge shaped uh, and then they're going to be connected with uh, little 18 gauge jump rings like this but they're also going to have a couple of loose jump rings on each link here so they kind of jingle when you move I kind of I've made some some similar ones to this in the past I think I used a little bit of thicker gauge. I'm just going to use 18 for these, but you could do whatever gauge you wanted to. Um, and I think that'll be kind of fun and, and give it a, an additional uh, layer of, of interestingness because it's got a little, some loose rings that kind of jingle. So I remember liking that one when I made it. So we'll start though with these ones. And I made a link in advance. This is how it came out. It's 18 gauge. I kind of I uh, shaped it and then I pounded it a little bit on the man or on my little uh, bench block. Um, you could just as easily run it through the rolling mill uh, to get a more consistent shape. I think on these ones I'm just going to um, hammer them. But uh, 18 gauge wire is 1.02 millimeters if I remember right. So we'll make a couple of these and then we'll hook them together. Then we'll move on to the next one, and I'll show you how to do this one. So, all right, let's start with that. Like I said, these ones I measured, they're about 37 millimeters long. I'll put a link to the playlist that has chains, in case you're interested in that up there. Uh, there's a number of videos that have some interesting things on them. So 37, right? So if we go to there, 
Put it right there. We'll cut that one and we'll use that to, as a template to cut a couple more. You always want to cut one more than you need because that way you still have uh, something you can use to measure more if you need more of them. If you haven't been to my channel before, um, I use hard silver sheet solder, which is, looks like this primarily, and I use a liquid flux. This is mighty flux, and I dribble it on generally, although I do have a spray bottle that I use sometimes. I used to spray all the time, but then uh, one of my YouTube subscribers sent me a little dribble bottle like that. I really like it. Okay. I'm just going to file the end of it. I kind of like making chains. I've always sort of liked the repetitiveness of it for some reason. It's kind of like soothing. Really, you can do whatever you want as far as um, shaping these at this point. I'm just going to kind of roughly round them out with my bail making pliers here because at this point I just need to get those two ends lined up so I can solder them together. It always helps me if I push them past each other a little bit so that they're pushing together. That way you get a little bit of uh, forward pressure there. One other thing that I do is called pick soldering. You could just lean a little piece of solder against those after you flux them, but I find that if I pick up a piece, it allows me to place it really precisely if I use a pick. And if you're interested in that, I'll put a link up there for a video about learning to do that. It's one of those skills that I think uh, it would behoove you to learn that one. <laughs> Never miss an opportunity to use a word like behoove you. Or behoove. I have to look up the etymology of that one. That's a weird word. <laughs> taught English for 28 years, so, so forgive me my colloquialisms when I use them. <laughs> I'm out of practice. I've been retired for five years now. I wonder I'm out of practice. Okay. I got this. This is one of my uh, subscribers gave me this. And it's one of those kind of pliers you can use to make some chains, or to make links, I should say. And you squeeze it and it kind of spreads it out like that. So I'm going to do that. Kind of reshape these kind of into uh, an elongated oval that's kind of pointy at the end. looking for. You could probably make this with a lot of variations to that shape. It doesn't have to be exactly the shape, I don't imagine. One thing that you'll note on this type of chain is that these big long links uh, don't have anything stopping them from rotating uh, when they're attached to these smaller rings. Um, in a lot of chains, let's say this is the ring that we have on this thing can 
rotate all the way around on those rings. So it's not going to stay necessarily in the same position. If you want that to happen, you need to put a stop on the end of these so that the ring can't rotate around the whole thing. And for this one, I'm not going to do that. But um, if you want it to, to not have as much movement, that's what you probably need to do. I wanted to thank those people who've downloaded my uh, new ebook. Uh, I really appreciate the support. Um, if you haven't heard of that, I just recently um, put a guide to all of the videos that I made in 2023 uh, together into an ebook that includes a picture of my sketch that I made beforehand, a uh, picture of the final outcome or outcomes if it's a multiple video project. Or a multiple project video, I should say. Um, a list of uh, materials you need and a difficulty rating. Some notes I made about the project, like whether I thought it was a, a good, you know, a good method to go about to do it. Because sometimes I'm trying to discover how to do this myself while I'm doing it. So if I if I decided after the fact that it might have been an easier way to do it or something, I'll usually note that in the annotations that I put in there. And then there's a link to the, the video itself if you want to watch the video. So it's a nice um, sort of concentrated way to have a whole bunch of interesting metalsmithing projects right at your fingertips with links right to the video. So uh, if you're interested in that, I'll put a link up there for you. I think it's a, it's a good way to to not only have a bunch of projects on hand, it's a good way to help support my channel so I can continue to produce these videos. Okay, that's pretty close. I'm just going to bring my bench block over here. And I'm going to use my little chaser here. I'm just going to kind of like do a little light flatting. This will give it a different look and will make it a little stiffer. Okay, so find some 18 gauge wire. I'm going to make a few jump rings. Put these together. Let's go. Could use some paste solder or two, but I'm just going to pick it on the end here. As long as I don't have any pre existing solder there and I'm not close to where those two come together, should be alright. Let's see what that other solder is. So there. So pre existing solder joints are right there there so if I just pick it right there it should be fine but like I said if you want to use some paste or something that's always a, a good spot to do some paste I know a lot of people fuse chains together using uh, like argentium silver I honestly haven't tried that yet by the time I get through my supply budget I always don't have enough money to buy any argentium to try it <laughs> especially right now expensive stuff is.
One thing I do sometimes, uh, if you're going to be soldering multiple links and you're worried about reflowing previous things, you can cover up part of it like this with something that blocks the heat because you're really not trying to heat those things up anymore. You're just trying to heat up the one that you're trying to solder closed. So those ones can be um, protected from the heat that way and then you, you don't run the risk of resoldering them to themselves or something. So. That's a trick you can do. Let me start to get this kind of nice looking chain like that. So that's chain number one. I'll probably make it a little longer for pictures at the end. And one of these at least I'm going to make and do a full bracelet, but I may not do it tonight since I'm having some back issues today. So the second type of chain I'm going to be doing something that looks like this. And then we're going to hook them together with these little ones like that. Hopefully we can do that without sticking anything together. <laughs> may use easy solder on this one just to make it uh, less likely to reflow any of the pre-existing solder. But uh, let's uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, these ones were 35 millimeters long and I made them out of 16 gauge. So here's the initial one I used to measure the length. So we'll that as a guide. Make a few of these. those clothes and then we'll shape them. Looks like I have plenty of solder here still. on these fancy things. I'll say I just do some gentle pinching with my chain nose pliers to work out some of the irregularities. The reason I use my chain nose is because on the outside of the wire I don't want to put use these round nose or something like this. Sometimes um, it'll put a dimple on the outside. Nobody wants uh, unsightly dimples on your <laughs> what would people say? Let's see. Did you see Chad's rings? They were all dimpled up.
So it gives me kind of in the, the range there on this one. Close enough for the moment. So now we gotta solder these little jump rings closed that are gonna become these, these end rings. And then we'll add them to the bigger rings.
I think I might use some easy solder, some easy paste solder. So I'm going to spread it out like that. Solder joint pointing up right there. I'll just use a little bit of this stuff. Sometimes I'll just use regular hard solder, but. <clears throat> I have an occasional fail when I, when I get things a little bit too hot. I don't want that to happen today. Picture here. It's kind of a nice looking link chain. You could, if you wanted to get fancy, you could put some little bezel set stones in the middle of those, or you could use some kind of design. Or you could do them round, do little piece sides, or you could make them heart shaped. Who knows? All sorts of options there. So I'm going to put that one in the pickle and then we'll work on this. Later. This one's going to be all 18 gauge, and I did 33 millimeter pieces, so let's cut a few of those. Same as before, let's make these ones into rings, and then we'll stretch them out to where they're long and lozenge shaped. Lozenge. Good. So I'm going to make a series of rings this big. See, these ones came off of that, that one. So I'm going to make a few more of those. So these are going to serve not only as the links between those lozenge shaped pieces, also going to be the free floating rings that move around along the length of those pieces. Okay, to start with, let's hook two of these together. These ones are spread out enough, I don't have to worry too much about them soldering together. Theoretically. <laughs> Oops. So now, I 
I need to solder it. Let's solder four of these closed just to, so we have some that we can have loosely around the other links. Okay, let's solder those closed. <clears throat> So, I'm going to slide two of these, actually, and make sure they're pretty flat. I'm going to do anything else. Just slide those down like that. Open up one of these unsoldered ones. Hook it on there. Hook on another one of these lozenge-shaped ones. Close that up. Two more. Open up one of these other ones. Add another one of the lozenge, lozenge shaped ones. <laughs> So then you got this nice chain, but it's also got those little free-floating rings in there that kind of add some character to it, give it some kind of fun. They also jingle a little when they're when you're walking. So it'd be just like in the '70s, where people would wear those kind of little bell sorts of jewelry. <laughs> so I'll keep adding to that, and then uh, those are the three. Um, distinct types of chains that I wanted to show today. Um, like I said, I'll probably turn these into bracelets, but I may not tonight. I may just elongate it a little bit so I can get a good picture, polish them, and then we'll put them, uh, you know, we'll put some better pictures of how they came out when they're polished up at the end. So, right. our first example, we have to lay right. That, I like that one. I think this one's my favorite, though, honestly. That one was pretty much what I expected it to look like. All right, here's the last one. See, I like how those those rings in the middle kind of move. I think that adds some a little bit of fun to it. So. Like I said, I'll probably turn these into bracelets, but I just wanted to kind of show you how to make the particular chains. So, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of variations you could do on these ones too, you know. So, proportions of rings and changing the shape slightly and adding stones or alternating with stones maybe for a kind of a cool bracelet. But, all right. Well, I'll get some uh, nice picture for the thumbnail and we'll put it at the end. All right, well, thanks for watching. That was three more uh, different simple silver chains you can make at home. Uh, if you like the content, make sure to hit the like button before you leave, and then take a moment and peruse some of my other videos. Uh, there's definitely more chains there. If you go, there's two previous episodes, each one with three different chains. And there's some other bracelets and things like that that would uh, be similar to this. So check those out. There's uh, playlists on my main page. Uh, or you can just scroll through the different videos that I have there. So take a look at those. 
uh, watch a few more and then subscribe to my channel I'd love to have you uh, the other thing is make sure to visit the video description down below there's some important links down there there's a link to my patreon if you want to find out more about that community uh, there's a link to my merch store where you can get both that ebook that I was talking about earlier or those nice design idea books uh, where you can sketch up things in uh, those are all available on the merch store you can even find a link to Pepe Tools because I'm an affiliate over there. So get yourself a nice rolling mill after you click on that link. Um, either way, thanks for watching. Come back and see us again. Take care. Happy silver spinning.